Clément, la scène est à vous. Hello everybody, my name is Clément Cellier. This is me. This is me when I was a child. As you can see, I have two eyes, one nose, one mouth. I'm perfectly normal. Like everybody, uh, I, I like sports, I like, I like kittens. Uh, well, I live in Paris. And I like to go to the supermarket and to find thousands of products on the shelves. I like to buy flawless fruits. I like to eat meat every day. And of course, I like when it's cheap, as cheap as possible, because I don't like to waste my money on food. Actually, I I've changed. I've changed in 2012 when I read a FAO report the Food and Agriculture Organization from the United Nations, that was saying and explaining that in 2050, we'll, we will be 9 billion people on the planet. 9 billion people. And if we want to be able to feed these people, we will have to double our actual production of protein. OK, let's do it. Well, we, we can't, actually, because we already use 70% uh, of the arable land to produce our food. So if we want to be able to feed everybody in 2050, we will need two planets. And of course, we don't have two planets, so <laughs> we'll have to find some solutions. Well, there are solutions, existing solutions. The first one would be to start to stop wasting so much food. Every year, we waste a third of the food we produce. So it would be a good start, but it won't be enough. We have to find other solutions. For example, egg gas, um, plant-based protein, of course, uh, artificial meat. But in this report, insects was a star. Well. Did I say insects, the, the disgusting things on the ground? Yes, insects. Why? Why insects? Well, it's very simple. The reason why fits in three letters. Y and E, for yield, nutrition, and environment. Well, let's start with yield. Insects are quite interesting because they don't have a warm blood. Actually, they don't have blood at all. So they don't need a lot of resources to be happy insects and to live like insects, to do what insects do. So they just need a few water and a few food to be happy. Another point is that 80% of the insects can be eaten. In comparison, when you breed a cow, for example, you will breed the cow, and then you will consume only a 40% of the cow. The 60% remaining will be trashed. So it's a waste of resources during all the life cycle of the animal. And the last uh, good point about insect is about its life cycle, which is very quick, very um, fast. You just need three months to get a whole generation of uh, mealworms, for example. So it's very quick. And insects are actually 80% of the biomass of the planet, of the ground, I mean, not the ocean. That means that you can find insects everywhere on the planet. It's adapted to every climate, and it could be a potential source of protein for everybody. The second aspect is about nutrition. Insects are actually full of protein. For example, in a dried cricket, you will find a 60% protein. It's three times more than in beef tech or chicken, 
four to five times more than in uh, soy steak, for example. But it's not the main point. This protein has a very good assimilation rate, and it's complete. That means that you will find all amino acids that your body can uh, produce by itself. And moreover, you will find vitamins like the B12 vitamins, uh, minerals like iron, zinc, calcium, and um, omega-3, 6, like in fish, and so on. So right now, you could eat insects without any trouble for your health and your body. I do eat insects, actually, two, three times a week. Uh, like, I do eat protein bars made with insects, and I, I feel good. I'm just uh, healthy. I feel, well, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, the third um, reason why you should eat insects is the main one, the environmental factor. Do you have any idea of how many liters are necessary to produce one single kilogram of beef? It's crazy. 17,000 liters of water to produce one single kilogram of protein. It's, it's way too much. In comparison, you, you need only 2,000 liters to produce one si single kilogram of soy and only 800 grams, uh, liters sorry, to produce this same kilogram of protein with insects. So can you just imagine 17,000 liters? Same painting for the food. Actually, you will need to produce the same amount of protein. You will need 12 kilograms of feed for a cow, 4 kilograms for chicken or pork, and only 2 kilograms for insects. Well, the last aspect is about greenhouse emissions. Today, agriculture produces 20% of the total of our greenhouse emission. 20%. So, Insects produce 99% less greenhouse emissions than uh, traditional cattle because they don't fart and so on, okay? <laughs> but, there is a big but, or I wouldn't be here with you guys today. Does anybody have ever eaten insect here? Is there a kind of uh, secret receipt of um, cricket moussaka or... I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Why? Why? Yeah, just take a second, just close your eyes. Take a seat, please. And, uh, and think about it. You already eat oysters, um, shrimps, you eat... Well, in France, we eat snails, yes, yes, I assume it. We eat frogs sometimes, well, not so much, but... We already eat a lot of things that could be disgusting in terms of um, physics. Uh, well, but insects, insects are our friends right now. In the history, we have been ins eating insects for ages. Well, our ancestors, cavemen, used to eat insects. It was yes, this is a caveman. <laughs> it could be uh, somebody from well. Um, so, we have been eating insects for ages, and 40,000 years ago, it was way easier to bend on the floor and to just ah, catch a little insect than to go to hunt the mammoth, you know? Have you ever seen a mammoth? It's, it's the big elephant. It's, it's very, it's huge and, well, it's dangerous. So, it was way easier to, to catch an insect like this. Well, more recently, one of your ancestors, a famous um, philosopher, Aristotle, this guy, he used to eat insects. We have found some uh, nice texts uh, explaining how he used to go to the market to buy some uh, locusts and uh, cicadas on the shelves between uh, chicken and other things. And you think you, you found Insects in the main, uh, the three main religions. For example, Jean Le Baptiste in the Bible, he also used to eat locusts with honey. Delicious. <laughs> Delicious. 
In Europe, we stopped eating insects around the 15th century because of religious issues. Insects were crawling on the floor and destroying the fields, so it was declared as evil and banished from our food. Banished? Not really, in fact. I have a big news for you. Oh, it's not working anymore. Okay, I broke the remote. <laughs> yes, I got it. So I have, a, I have a, a big secret to tell you. You already eat 500 grams of insects every year. Every single European do eat insects already. Because you can find insect parts and pieces everywhere in your food, in the bread, vegetables, fruits, and so on. So you already eat insects, but it's not, it's not all. You already eat insects because you eat products made with insects. The coloring E120 is actually made with cochony, which is a small insect from Peru. It gives the very nice red coloring that we use in candies and so on. So you already actually eat insects. And you're not alone. You're not alone, guys. Because every day, insects are a part of the diet of two billion people all over the planet, in Japan, Mexico, in um, Africa, South America, for example, Asia, of course. And since 2012, dozens of companies have started to design and develop and sell products made with insects. I've been one of them with my dear partner, Bastien Rabastens, and we have started five years ago with a, an ambitious mission to make insects a part of our diet in order to reduce the environmental impact of our food. Well, we have started with the wall insects that we have seasoned with paprika, for example, paprika grasshoppers, um, garlic and herbs mealworms, BBQ crickets. And, well, it was not so expected, but we succeed. Um, we have sold thousands of products, and after that, we keep on working with insect powder products. And for one year now, we have been working on the next step, which is the instec. Insect stack. So <laughs> it's not so complicated to understand. And our goal is to offer our clients a real alternative to actual sources of protein with the sustainability of plant-based products and the taste and nutrition values of meat. Well, of course, it is a new industry. We will have to work a lot. All over the world, a lot of companies have started to work on this industry. And as we have been, for example, breeding some chicken for 8,000 years now, we have everything to learn on the insect farming. So the first challenge for this industry to be successful will be quality standards and security because insects, for example, are kind of cousins with uh, shellfish and crustaceans. That means that they share the same allergens. So, unfortunately, if you have an allergy to shrimps or prawns or this kind of food, you can't eat insects. I'm sorry. The second point is about the price. Right now, if you want to substitute a part of your protein with insects, you would be better to be rich because it's quite expensive. But sooner or later, with economies of scales, with the development of the demand, the price will drop, and it's all already the case. So the last and one of the most difficult issue of our market in Europe, as always, is the low. You could think that marketing and sales are harder, the hardest points for us, but it's not true. The law is the 
hardest points because the law is always very slow. Slow. <laughs> but little by little, it's going to, to be okay. Because since the 1st of January, um, insects are considered as a novel food. So it's cool because in novel food you have the word food. So it's food now. And um, before, this, before that, it was like in an, an empty space. It was, okay, it's insect, but we don't know if it's food or not. Uh, so now it's food, so it's very good because it will open new markets for everyone, every players of this industry, and it will allow us to develop some new partnerships and so on. Well, we have started five years ago with 50 shops selling our products and helping us to make people uh, discover insects. Now we have 800 shops in six countries selling our products. Of course, we are not alone. But with all these companies who are doing the job like us, we believe that we can go from insect as a novelty to insect as a real alternative, sustainable alternative to other kind of proteins. I would like to finish on a very important conclusion. Insects will be the future of food. Okay? But it won't be the only future. It won't, it won't be the, the only protein source. The very important point to understand is that in the near future, we will be eating insects, algaeas, plant-based products, and may many other sources of protein. We believe in flexitarism. We don't kill, I don't know, uh, meat, because sometimes people think we are meat killers. We, we, I like meat, okay, it's okay. But we will be eating better quality meat, and we will vary a lot the sources of protein we, we consume. So, just remember, my name is Clément Cellier. I'm absolutely normal. I do eat insects, and I like it. Thank you very much. <laughs>